uh, to Conleth Burns New College to open the case for the opposition. The quality of the Irish, that remarkable combination of hope, confidence and imagination is needed more than ever before. The words of John F. Kennedy when he spoke to the Irish Parliament in 1962. Today, on the 55th anniversary of his assassination, we ask ourselves, do we have the hope, confidence and imagination to, needed to unite the people of Ireland? I do not believe that we have, and for that reason, Ireland is not yet ready for reunification, not yet being the crucial standard. I am an Irish nationalist from Northern Ireland. I believe in the promise and the potential of a united people of Ireland. But I know, if I'm honest with myself, a vote today will not allow that future united Ireland to reach the potential that I dream of. I hope someday that it will, but today is not that day. Tonight, I'm going to demonstrate three things. First, that Ireland is not ready for reunification because Northern Ireland remains divided and questions about post-reunification Ireland remain unanswered. Second, that there is value in giving time to the people of Ireland to consider their constitutional future. And third, there are a number of steps that we need to take to get ready for reunification. Before I begin, Mr. President, it is my pleasure to introduce the Honourable Proposition, as uh, Brendan so ably did just before us. You've just heard from Brendan McGrath, the second year PPAs from Oriel College, librarian elect here at the Union, an accomplished and experienced Union hack. His rise to power at the Union is based on two things, an effective caucusing of the Irish vote and completing his A-levels at a posh public school in, in Kent. His running... <laughs> He's not running in tomorrow's election, so if you're from Ireland, Northern Ireland or Seven Oaks, you don't have to worry, you're not going to get hacked tonight. <laughs> Our guests tonight are Thomas Byrne TD, Fianna Fáil spokesperson for education, Colm Eastwood MLA, leader of the Social Democratic and Labour Party, and Joan Burton TD, former Tonisja and former leader of the Irish Labour Party. There is a certain irony to the shape of the proposition tonight on this issue of unification. These three part parties are caught in the middle of a Love Island-esque recoupling drama. Columns and Jones' parties have been sister parties for a very long time, but now Thomas's party and Columns' party are currently negotiating some sort of prenuptial agreement ahead of some sort of merger or deep and meaningful relationship. But no one is really sure whether the other is 100% their type on paper. And if the polls are anything to go by, the Irish public are not sure that any of them are 100% their type on paper. They are here tonight to convince us that Ireland and Northern Ireland are ready for a recoupling of historic proportions, and they are the people to deliver it. Pardon my scepticism. Mr President, these are your guests, and may we extend a warm Cade Mila Fulcher to them. To argue that Ireland is ready for reunification is to say that after years of work, we have overcome divisions across the island. Sadly, we have not. Northern Ireland is a deeply divided society, still struggling to come to terms with its past. 109 peace walls divide communities across Northern Ireland. 80% of children attend segregated Protestant or Catholic schools. Almost all social housing is segregated on the basis of religion or political affiliation. Until that division is overcome, Northern Ireland will not be ready for reunification. Bold political leadership is needed to take down the walls, to integrate the schools and to create shared and united communities. Yet for the past 675 days, Northern Ireland has been without a devolved government. Even at this most critical time, when, with the huge social and economic uncertainty posed by Brexit, the political leadership of Northern Ireland has retreated into the sectional and factional politics that it has always played. The Honourable Proposition tonight expect us to believe that this same political class is capable of delivering reunification, benefiting all the people on the island of Ireland. It is irresponsibility of Boris and Brexiteer proportion to suggest that, we, that the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland is ready to call a referendum on Irish unity. Friends, 
in your vote tonight, you have the chance to reject such irresponsibility. You have the chance to demand better of our politicians. And I ask you to take that chance and vote this motion down. Let's imagine the ballot paper that will be delivered to, to polling stations across Ireland and Northern Ireland on the day of a unity referendum. To the potential voters in this room, what will you need to know before that vote? Will laws be made in Dublin, Belfast or both? Will healthcare be free at the point of use? Will you and your family be financially better off? Will our vote be a vote to end the plight of inequality? Will our vote protect and celebrate British identity of our unionist friends? Will our vote ensure the right to everyone's home? We have a right to know the answers to these questions. And if the proposition tonight cannot answer those questions, then we are not ready for reunification. Fellow members, unanswered questions are dangerous. Look no further than the 2016 EU referendum. Unsubstantiated promises plastered on buses, scaremongering printed in punishment budgets, an unnecessarily negative debate on both sides. That drove the debate away from reasoned, based deliberation to emotionalism and opportunism. It turned the debate to identity, to a them and us debate. For far too long, the mentality of them and us has plagued the island of Ireland. It has resulted in divided communities and much spilled blood. What excites me about a united Ireland is the chance to deconstruct this dichotomy. A chance for our people, once and for all, to see that we are far more united and have far more in common with each other than the things that divide us. I believe one day Ireland and Northern Ireland will, will reunify. But to prepare for this, we need time, a clear choice, and a more inclusive approach to identity. In Scotland in 2014, voters were given three years to prepare for the referendum. The Electoral Commission reports that 90% of Scots felt that they were confidently informed ahead of the referendum. A similarly long period of notice and campaigning is needed in Ireland and Northern Ireland. Citizens' assemblies have worked really well on the island of Ireland in the last uh, period of time, and they are needed again to, to create constructive spaces for dialogue on the flag, the anthem, the constitutional shape and the political framework of a united Ireland. If we learn anything from Brexit, it is the need for a roadmap on what happens after the referendum. A blueprint of a post-reunification Ireland is needed before the vote. We have a right to know what is at stake on the ballot paper. Nationalist and unionist leaders need to come together to agree a transition period and a procedure for further constitutional amendments and an outlined vision for a reunified Ireland. Above all else, what we need is a new and inclusive approach to identity. A new identity fundamentally enriched by all of Ireland's culture, Irish, British, Northern Irish and other. An Ireland where we can celebrate the 17th of March and the 12th of July in equal measure. An Ireland where we overcome that the fallacy that Irishness and anti-Britishness are somehow the same thing and somehow desirable. An Ireland with an identity infused with hope, confidence and imagination. We are not living in this Ireland and until we do, we will not be ready for reunification. When I think about readiness for reunification, I think about my village and its journey. I come from a small village called Armoy on the north coast of Northern Ireland. It's what people call a mixed village. For a long time, there wasn't very much mixing there. My community built two shops, two pubs, two schools, two parks, two churches, one for the Catholics, the other for the Protestants. They made division work for them. 18 years ago, the Tilly Malloy's Cross Community Centre was opened, a place where people from all backgrounds could meet and socialise together. I was in the first class of the playgroup there, and today I help run that centre. From my experience, bringing people together and uniting a small community is hard work. It requires sensitivity, patience, and a fundamental belief that compromise is a good thing. To unite the island of Ireland, our politics needs to exhibit those values, and today it does not. As a young voter, I do not believe that our current political generation, indeed the members of the Honourable Proposition, are capable of delivering the United Ireland that I hope and dream of. 
I believe in the new generation of Irish and Northern Irish young leaders, the young Irish and Northern Irish people in this audience and our friends and colleagues back home from all backgrounds and all communities. I believe in our capacity to make reunification work for everyone. I believe one day we will unite the people of Ireland, but we are not there yet. So tonight, invest your hope not in this generation, but the next a generation capable of delivering reunification in Ireland when we are ready. Thank you.